Tonight, Washington waits for the January 6th committee to make their criminal referrals. They have had supreme power and an unlimited budget to question and investigate Trump world. But there are serious and troubling questions about what their motives really are. Good evening. Welcome to the program. I'm Leland Vittert. First tonight, On Point. New audio tapes in a pre-release book obtained by On Balance offer further evidence of the January 6th committee's anti-Trump motives, rather than, say, a good faith effort to prevent another January 6th tragedy. The committee would like us to believe Trump is singularly responsible for calling the mob to Washington, inciting them, and then delaying a response to the attack on the Capitol. Again, that's what the committee would like us to believe. They've had television hearings to try and prove that thesis. Take, for example, the picture we all remember of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer huddled in their secure room on the phone during the riot. But for Trump, the committee's narrative goes, they would never have been in that situation, which may be true, it may not be. Former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund testified before the committee for more than six hours. The former Capitol Police Chief and the committee never released a single word of his testimony. Sund's narrative is far less helpful to the committee. For example, Sund testified he asked for the National Guard to help secure the Capitol on January 3rd, 2020, but was rebuffed. To feel more comfortable, I wanted more personnel on my, on my perimeter. And I first went over, uh, went to Paul Irving's office at 924 in the morning uh, and asked him specifically, I would like to request National Guard for January 6th. So he, uh, he immediately um, responded, ooh, don't, you know, don't like the optics. I said, I, you know, I'd like them to help support the perimeter. And he goes, the intelligence, uh, the response was, the intelligence doesn't um, support that. That was three days that phone call and request three days before the January 6th riots. Paul Irving was the House Sergeant at Arms. Son makes the case that Irving was doing the bidding of Speaker Pelosi, who didn't like the optics of National Guard troops around the Capitol. Of course, Pelosi and or Irving's testimony before the January 6th committee could help clear things up. But like everything that the committee has gotten, they won't release it. Think about that. The committee that has 130,000 documents, 1,000 witnesses, 57 staffers, and has spent millions of dollars will not release anything except for their 20 hours of made-for-TV hearings. We paid for those thousands of hours of testimony. We paid for the investigation. We, the taxpayers, deserve all of the information, not just the information that is helpful to the committee's narrative. Republicans claim that pressure from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, along with the mayor of Washington, D.C., were responsible for a poorly prepared and defended Capitol. Here's Kevin McCarthy and Elise Stefanik back in July of 2021. There's questions into the leadership within the structure of the Speaker's office, where they denied the ability to bring the National Guard here. She prioritized her partisan political optics over their safety. On Balance obtained an advanced copy of Sun's book titled Courage Under Fire. It's going to be released in January. It largely supports the Republican narrative, or at the very least, exposes serious issues before, during, and after January 6th for which MAGA Republicans are not responsible. Of course, this is in no way an excuse or an apology for the riots themselves, but it does shed light on the January 6th committee's singular focus to get Trump rather than exhaustively and impartially report on the events before, during, and after the Capitol riot. Most importantly, something all Americans should want, we want to make sure that this never happens again. How do we make sure of that unless we can be honest about how it happened, be honest about everything and all mistakes that were made before it happened? Sun claims that Irving's reference to optics were actually direct orders from Speaker Pelosi, or at the very least, an expression by the House Sergeant at Arms, who's a political, not a law enforcement official, of Pelosi's wish wishes. But for Pelosi's refusal, Sund argues, he would have prepositioned the D.C. National Guard and could have possibly prevented the rioters from breaking into the Capitol. Sun takes aim at Pelosi for allegedly blocking him. 
He quotes a lunch meeting in April of 2021 with Michael Stenger, who served as the Senate Sergeant at Arms discussing Sun's January 3rd request from the book. He, Stenger, said Irving called him and told him I would be coming his way to request the guard. According to Stenger, Irving, the House Sergeant at Arms, said, quote, Sun just came here requesting the National Guard. We have to come up with another idea. Pelosi is never going to go for that. Stenger has since died, and Irving disputes that account. Pelosi's spokesperson told The Washington Post there had been no discussions between Irving and either Pelosi or her staff about National Guard deployment before January 6th. Quote, we're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of that office at all. We expect security professionals to make security decisions. Lack of transparency, though, remains one of the key criticisms against the January 6th committee that will likely deliver its final report before the end of this Congress and Republicans will take over in January. NBC reports the committee will release transcripts of its interviews that didn't make prime time and other hearings. But it's unclear if they will release everything or stick to their previous pattern of selectively leaking and then televising only that which is unhelpful to President Trump. That's what they've been doing so far. Sun's testimony corresponds with previously reported grievances about January 6th, including the delay to send National Guardsmen later in the afternoon as the riot got worse. Here is Sun talking about the critical 90 minutes between 1 p.m. and 2.30 on the 6th. Rioters had overwhelmed the Capitol Police, and he called General Walter E. Piott at the Pentagon on the afternoon of January 6th. I need the National Guard ASAP. General Piott said, and I will never forget this. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I'm concerned about the optics of the National Guard standing in line with the Capitol in the background. You know, here I am, getting my officers are getting beaten, and they're worried about the optics of the National Guard. And he said, um, my recommendation is to deny the request. I will not forget that. Um, I was borderline getting pretty pissed off. Yeah, it's scheduled to retire from the Army after being passed over for, for, for promotion, allegedly because of his actions on January 6th. Sun's book clearly attempts to settle some longstanding grievances, especially with Speaker Pelosi. On January 7th, Pelosi said she was asking for Sun's resignation and noted Sun did not call her during or after the attacks the day before. Sun says Pelosi's not telling the truth. He lays out in his book three times that they spoke during the late afternoon of the 6th, including once with then-VP Mike Pence on the phone. The back cover to Sun's book promises explosive answers, including why didn't the FBI and Department of Homeland Security issue a joint intelligence bulletin regarding January 6th threats. Whether the book lives up to a convincing standard of proof on that issue and others is up to the reader after an in-depth comparison to what the current record is. The problem is we don't know all of the current record. The book and the tapes we have obtained highlight the very fact that so much of the record, including thousands of hours of sworn depositions, remains known to the January 6th committee but hidden from the American people. More importantly, the lessons to be learned from that material that could prevent another January 6th remain hidden because the committee has chosen to focus on the partisan political fight.